officer gets a dispatch call. Little girl says her dad is mad and drank a bunch of alcohol. And so they head away into trouble again. People at the house are screaming. Someone yells he's got a gun. special Saturday, sorry, Thursday edition of Leo's Coast to Coast. We are very blessed and honored and grateful to have someone who I believe is one of the biggest live PD legends that has ever been on this show. And that is Sergeant Denver Leverett and Flex from Jeffersonville PD. Good afternoon, Sergeant. How are you today? Doing pretty good, and you? I'm very grateful. Thank you. We're thankful to have you on. Thank you to your assistant chief uh, for your chief of police and also to you for taking the time. I know you have been very, very busy today. So thanks for taking the time with everybody, okay? No problem. Hey, folks, our phone call uh, number, if you'd like to speak with Sergeant Leverett, your chance is now, okay? All you folks that love him and loved on him all this time have been shooting me all these messages. Now is your shot. You can speak with him live, and I'm sure he'd love to be able to talk with you, okay? His phone number, I'm sorry, our phone number to reach him is 503-420-4062. You can call us anytime during the show. That is 503-420-4062. Sergeant Leverett, um, we are very grateful to have you. Um, what have you been doing with your time since Live PD? Oh, since Live PD, uh, just working, spending time with my family, and just got back from uh, Indianapolis. I was out of town for uh, probably four days for some introduction training. So just now got back last night. So today's my first day back to work. Well, we're grateful you joined us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, no what problem. made you decide to become a police officer, Sergeant Leverett? Um, I would say, you know, public service is pretty much in my blood. My dad is a retired firefighter of 20 years. Wow. Um, my uncle's a retired police chief. I have a cousin on our police department, a cousin on our fire department, another cousin on a fire department in Cincinnati. So it's just, it was in my blood and... Growing up, I always had a passion for 
police canines, and I always wanted to be a, a canine cop since, you know, the time of probably 10 years old and just followed my dream. And once graduating high school, I attended Indiana University Bloomington and got my degree and then did an internship in Louisville, Louisville Kentucky. And after that, I applied several different police departments and then I got hired here at the beginning of 2001. Wow, we've got some uh, messages on the screen. Thank you so much to you and your family for their service. Uh, this comes out of Nevada and Pachette. I'm not sure where you're from, but I'm sure Sergeant Levert appreciates your kind words. Um, so really, it runs in your family. It's been quite long. Now, are you second generation in law enforcement or third? No, I'm, I'm the first police officer in my immediate family. My father, uh, he was a major on the fire department and the fire marshal. And then my brother, he's a uh, an attorney in Nashville, Tennessee. Okay. So I'm the only police officer. So I lock him up, and he gets him out. <laughs> there you go. All right. You know, you moved into the detective division. How long ago did you do that? Moved to the detective division. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I spent. You know, we work. Uh, you know, first, second, third shift here, and the shifts are permanent. I I did patrol work for probably. I would say three or four years, and I was assigned to our flex division, uh, which took upon uh, narcotics and some plainclothes work, and then I got assigned to the detective division, went back to patrol when I took sergeant uh, for three years, and then came back to narcotics. So probably uh, 12 or 13 years of my going on 18-year career is probably been strictly narcotics and all I do is uh, interdiction, uh, stop and knocks, uh, pit checks and you know surveillance but uh, this strictly focused on narcotics work only. Okay. Janice Phelps had a question for you Sergeant. She asked would you, uh, are you a person that would want one of your children to become a police officer? Would you be okay with that knowing the dangers that, that face you guys? Would I let my son? Yeah, would you be uh, okay with that? Son. He's, yeah, he's three years old, and I would treat my son just like my mother and father treated me. You you do what makes you happy, and, you know, as long as you give 110% at whatever you choose to do, whether it's police, fire, teacher, doctor, uh, mechanic, uh, the military, uh, just give 110% and be the best at whatever you choose to be. So I would support him, and I wouldn't try to you know, steering one direction or another. Okay. Janice, there's your answer. Thank you so much. We're still on the phone here with Sergeant Denver Leverett from the Jeffersonville Police Department. Um, question came across the screen, Sergeant, how long you and Flex have been together? Uh, Flex is my fourth canine, and I've been doing it 17 years. And Flex turns uh, five years old. Oh, he actually turned six. He turned six in... November. So I've had him five years, and then uh, I had my first one for like six or seven, and the middle two I had for two or three apiece. So he's my fourth one. He'll be my last one. But uh, we've been working together for about five years, and uh, now I have a little three-year-old son, so he takes my, my priority and my wife. So my, you know, my energy is now focused in a di different direction, so he'll be my last one, so I'm enjoying every minute with him. That's wonderful, and I'm sure that your three-year-old and Flex are pretty, bu pretty good buddies, I'd imagine. Well, they're, they're best friends, and I don't ever, you know, let them be together alone uh, mm -hmm. due to the fact that, you know, accidents do happen, and, you know, my police canine is a liability, and, you know, he also does criminal apprehension. You see mostly drug work, but he actually does criminal apprehension, so he does bite, mm -hmm. but he only bites on command. And um, But he and my son get along, and you wouldn't even think he's a police dog at home, but, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're best of friends. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Um, you know, another question came through, and I don't know how to ask this. I, I would rather phrase it a different way. I mean... You know, the live PD people call you the human lie detector. That kind of became a, a, a nickname for you. I don't know if it's thought of as being a, um, a, a complimentary term 
or, or not. So I don't want to use that. But I will ask you this. You know, you've got a keen sense of knowing when somebody's withholding something. Has that been something you've always had or is it something you've developed through experience? Um, you know, mainly uh, coming up through law enforcement, I attended uh, two classes and actually just got back from uh, this, the same one again last night. It's Desert Snow and another one called Drug Warrior and Joe David with Desert Snow and Kirby Staley with, he's an Indiana State Trooper with uh, Drug Warrior. I attend these interdiction courses and what they focus on are what we call criminal indicators. And this is what we focus on strictly, regardless of race, religion, sex, gender, it doesn't matter. And these things, when you take them in uh, by themselves, they're innocent in nature. They may be like air fresheners, uh, you know, inconsistencies in stories, uh, avoidance of eye contact, heavy breathing, you know, knowledge of someone's criminal history. When taken together, you know, separately, they're innocent in nature. But when you have 10 or 15 collectively, then it is not consistent with the innocent motoring public. So this is what we focus on, and that's the only thing we focus on. So when I'm engaging in dialogue with somebody, and I get all of these criminal indicators, within the first 60 seconds, you know, I kind of know whether I'm going one direction or the other, probably within that first minute or two. Uh, this is, you know, the training I've had, and um, that's kind of what leads me to believe that, uh, you know, criminal activity may be afoot, and then, you know, as you conversate with people and you get inconsistencies in stories, you confront them with their, you know, their their false statements, and then it's just one thing leads to another. But, you know, a key to it is being persistent. You know people are going to lie to you probably two, three, four times, and you just have to be persistent. And uh, some people call it trickery. Some people call it deception. I don't. Uh, I'd call it active listening. Yeah, yeah, I think I think it's just active listening as a communication skill. Yeah, it's just uh, it's, it's interview techniques, That's and right. uh, it's just. But this is all I do out here, so mm -hmm. you know I've developed a, a passion for it, and it's my craft, and I try to be the best at it. Uh, so that's, but I do it on a daily basis. So it's not something I was born with. I, I practice it, and I attend, you know, trainings and. Uh, you just you have to get out here and do it to, to become good at it. So you keep sharpening up your skills through added education and basically become an active listener and and watch you 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 carefully watch people's behaviors and I think that's one of the exactly. things I, I enjoy so much about you being in communications myself, but not to your level. Um, the the right. amount that you, you know, that you watch people is yeah. fantastic. Yeah, you know, for example, if. Uh, if I stop a car and they don't, they tell me they don't have an ID. Well, there's my first red flag. Mm -hmm. You know, if they say they're on probation or parole, there's my third red flag. You know, I'm a second red flag. If they don't know their social security number, there's my third red flag. And, <laughs> and if you give me a date of birth and then I ask you right after that, how old are you? And, and your age is not matching up with your date of birth. And that's, I mean, you know, one, one clue after another. And then we, we keep pressing and, um, you know, you, you just you have to you have to be persistent. You have to treat people with respect and, and talk to them as an equal. Um, and sometimes, uh, you know, people out here they they beat me. Uh, they get by me with drugs or guns, and you know it's it, it's not a perfection, but it's it's a tool that we use. And I, I try to you know I try to use that tool in the best manner that I can. Well, you do a fine job of it, and I think that uh, what most of Live PD Nation feels, at least based on comments I've received, Sergeant, is that, you know, you are so different than a lot of the other officers we see on the show because of your interview techniques. Um, you see, you tend to be able to, you know, watch people uh, in a way, push a little farther and dig a little bit deeper and you seem to always have the right questions to say. You know, it's it's a it's an art that I'm sure you've learned over the years, and you're very good at it. And I believe that people admire you so much for that. So, for the amount of work you put in and what you've done, congratulations. You're very good at your job. You really are. Well, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. I told you this guy is really nice, right? I told you guys. Okay. <laughs>
He's the nicest guy, one of the nicest people I speak with, really. And, and, and my, my belief is, is if you're engaged in a conversation with somebody on a traffic stop or a stop and knock or a pet check, and you come at them strong, you talk down to them, well, you're going to do one of two things. You're either going to shut them down totally and they're not going to talk to you, or you're going to have conflict. You're going to, you might, you know, get them to the point where they want to fight. That, and that's not what you want to do. You want to de-escalate everything and... If you talk to somebody as an equal and treat them with respect and kindness, but still be professional and, and, and stand your ground, uh, you know, through conversation, I can get people to incriminate themselves a lot of times because the way I talk to them about it is I'm minimizing it, and they don't even realize they incriminate themselves, you know, and then probable cause is established, and now we're at a different level of the traffic stop. So, <laughs> you know, it's just through conversation. you got to learn to talk to people and make them feel comfortable and um you know, the innocent motoring public, they don't give you criminal indicators because they're not doing anything wrong, and they're going to know how they are. They're going to know where they're going. They're going to know the relationship that they occupied inside the vehicle with them and how long they've been in the car together. It's, and we could go on and on, but, you know, when you start speaking with people in conversation, you know, on a roadside interview and you, you separate the parties or if you just have one occupant, they can't rehearse the whole story. Maybe if you, you know, a highlight for they can't rehearse the whole thing. And then once you get those inconsistencies and you watch their physiological reaction on their body to these questions, it's, you can't stop it. I mean, I've watched people with their carotid artery, carotid artery on their neck just pulsates and then they go pale and then they get the whites in the corners of their mouth. And then <laughs> some of them get to the point where they feel like they're going to throw up. Wow. Wow. So, there you go. There's your answer. You know, the, the man <laughs> watches what he's doing, and that's so important. Uh, question a while back goes, I hate to go back over old territory, but this is an important right. question. Um, one of our listeners had a question as to when Flex retires, will you keep him? Yes, they, uh, they live at home with us, and, and he does belong to the police department. So if I was to, let's say, retire right now, and he still has, you know, three or four years of good work in him. Technically, the department owns him. They can assign him to a new handler. But our chief of police, he's been very kind, very supportive, and um, I've always been, you know, blessed with the, you know, the people that I do work for. They allow once my canine retires to live at home with me okay. uh, because we have that bond, and there is a, a liability for, you know, we don't want him fighting somebody, you know, and I'm his handler, so. I've always been, you know, uh, provided that uh, opportunity for them to live with me. So hopefully he can just stay with me when he retires, I retire and, you know, live out his, his days as just a regular old pet at home. That's great. We're on the phone with Sergeant Denver Leverett from the Jeffersonville Police Department. You have a chance to call in and speak with him live. His Our phone number to reach us here for the show is 503 420 That is 503 503- Four two zero four zero six two. You have the chance to speak with him live. So remember that. I know a lot of people probably wondering how Flex is doing. Could you tell us an update? Well, right now he's uh, snoring a little bit, so he's he's doing quite fine in my car, and uh, he's got the air conditioner going because it's really hot here at home, and mm-hmm. uh, he's ready to go to work. But nah, he's he's a very quiet one, and he's always. I'm we do have to have a little surgery tomorrow. I'm going to have to get him neutered because he's got some health-related issues that we need to go ahead and have that procedure done and to prevent anything further. Wow. Uh, so tomorrow he's going to be under the weather a little bit, but he'll be back to work probably within a week. Wow. Well, um, we, we our prayers for Flex and uh, for his safety in the surgery. Um, there's your answer. So we have a phone call here. Let's take it right now. Hello, good afternoon. You are live on Leo's Coast to Coast with Sergeant Denver Leverett. Who's this and where are you calling from? Hi, this is Rebecca from Las Vegas. How are you, Larry? How are you, Denver Leverett? Good. 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 Thank you. Good. Thank you. Go ahead. What What do you got, kiddo? Um, my question is, I want to know if the department provides them with all the safety equipment that the Canines of Valor um, provide, like the safety kits, the hot lock, you know, that pops the locks in the car. Do you have all that stuff, the Narcon kits? 
Okay, uh, I, the phone was kind of cutting out a little bit, but Sorry. I think she asked about any safety equipment for the yeah. canines, and are we provided that? Yes. Thank you for your call, Rebecca. Yes. We appreciate it. Yes, we, we do. Uh, we had a veterinarian uh, actually put together a go bag for us that has the Narcan and any trauma uh, medical supplies that we need if he was to get shot. Uh, she provided that uh, at a conference for free of charge. Um our administration has been 100% supportive of anything that, that Flex needs. Uh, through ACE K9, uh, we do have a hot pop system in my car, so I carry a button on my belt. If I'm out and do need him in an emergency, I can pop the belt. Uh, also, we have a temperature monitoring system in my car that if it gets above 90 degrees, the, the fans will kick on, the horn will sound. So at various individuals and companies that have been very supportive, and provided him with the, the things that he does need. Uh, we had a, um, a juvenile in our area that raised money that uh, has now donated for uh, bulletproof vests for our canines. So we've been, we've been very blessed by several you know, individuals in our community and abroad. There you go. Rebecca, thank you for your call from Las Vegas. We've got another call here. Welcome to Leo's Coast to Coast. You're live with Sergeant Denver Leverett. Who's this and where are you calling from? Oh, you're going to need to turn down the volume on your electronic device, my friend. There's going to be a delay there, okay? <laughs> Happens every time, Sergeant. Sorry about that. Hello? Right. Hello? You're on the air Hi. with Sergeant Leverett. Hey. How are you, Sergeant Leverett and Barry? Good, thank you. I'm good. I can barely I just hear you. I wanted to so say that I'm uh, from Louisville, Kentucky, a big fan. Uh, my daughter and I miss you severely on live PD. And I just wanted to say that having law enforcement in our family ourselves, that we know you put your life and Flex put his life on the line every day. And we just wanted to say thank you. Oh, that's sweet. I really appreciate it. Did she say she's from Louisville? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah, we say Louisville here. It's, it's uh, just a, a thing. We, I, I think I recognized it by her saying that and she's uh she's just right across the water from me so i appreciate the phone call i lived in jeffersonville for a year so i know exactly you, you lived in jeffersonville for a year oh <laughs> well we just said is that what you said yeah while. she said she had lived in jeffersonville for about a year is what she said oh good good yeah love was about a mile from me well it's great to talk to you we do miss you guys severely but we did we wanted to say thank you Bless no problem. Heart. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Bless your heart. Judy, thank you so much for your call. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Take care now and have a good day. 503-420-4062 to speak with Sergeant Denver Leverett here on Leo's Coast to Coast. We're very honored to have him. We're great for you taking the opportunity here. I know that the buzz has been quite high all week. So your chance to ask him whatever or tell him whatever you'd like. Kindly. All right. 4204062 and the area code 503. Sergeant Leverett, the Jeffersonville PD has shown they have excellent officers working there. Could you tell us a little bit about the community service work, the things you guys get involved with in the area? Yes, um, our administration is very community policing oriented, and uh, our chief of police, Ken Cavanaugh, just the best chief ever, uh, and he strives for professionalism and we have to uh you know make those bonds of the community stronger get that back develop a level of trust and respect because without the community we, we can't do our job it, it goes both ways and we need their help so we do uh, various outreach programs we have a uh, citizens academy where uh, you know various citizens from the community can attend a multi-week course to learn, you know, about what we do, uh, see the various aspects of law enforcement. Uh, we have ride-along programs. We have internships from the, you know, the local schools. You know, we do canine demos. Uh, we attend uh, parades and various uh, functions within the community. So we're very involved with our community, and it's, it's being led from the top down. Our mayor, a chief, assistant chief, uh, we're just really promote the community policing aspect of law enforcement. 
Well, there you go, and I appreciate that, Sergeant Leverett. We're live with Sergeant Denver Leverett from Jeffersonville PD. Your chance to call in, say hello. Your chance to speak with a legend of live PD that I know everybody surely loves is the phone number 503-420-4062. That's 503-420-4062. Sergeant Leverett, does the Jeffersonville Police Department have a mission statement? And if so, what is it, and how do you apply it to your work? I'm not um, exactly sure on the exact dial, uh, the exact wording of our mission statement, okay. but it is community policing oriented, professionalism, integrity, respect, and just treating others the way that you would want to be treated and treating them as equals. Uh, I don't have our mission statement uh, in front of me, so I don't want to misquote it, That's but true. it's the very, uh, you know, the biggest aspect of it is community policing and you know maintaining those relationships and those those bonds with our community excellent thank you very much we appreciate that um we've got a, a bunch of questions coming coming through here if you'd like to speak with sergeant denver leverett the number is 503-420-4062 rebecca in las vegas thanks for putting that on the screen i do appreciate that um sergeant leverett this part of the show that i think there you go. See, it's just people love you, man. This is year. This is a parade of you, okay? Hi, this is Leo's Coast to Coast. You're live with Sergeant Denver Leverett. Who is this and where are you calling from? Hello? Hello? <laughs> well, they'll call back, okay? Um, question for you here, and, and this is probably the one that, that a lot of people would love to hear the answer to, because every officer tells a different one, okay? And now there's the phone, okay. Hi, you're live with Sergeant Denver Leverett on Leo's Coast to Coast. Who's this and where are you calling from? Yes, my name is Sarah Harmon. Hi, Sarah, where I'm are you calling Missouri. from? From where? Missouri. Missouri, welcome to the show. You're live with Sergeant Leverett. What would you like to talk with him about? I would like to know what the best advice was he was giving from anyone in his life in order to be a great law enforcement officer. And what advice would he give up and coming officers? Good question. Sarah, uh, thank you. Yeah, I, that's pretty easy to answer uh, because the first thing that pops out in my mind is something that my father always told me, and that is be a leader, not a follower. Um, so... It doesn't matter where you're at, you know, who's involved. Don't be at the wrong place at the wrong time. You have to be a leader, not a follower, and you have to know when to walk away, when to do the right thing, when to stand up for somebody that needs to be stood up for, uh, regardless of peer pressure, uh, you know, social demands. Just, you know, believe in yourself and be a leader, not a follower. And mm -hmm. I've always kind of had that motto, and I'm trying Just to keep myself please. Now. So if I can be half the father that my my dad was, then, you know, I feel like I, I did my job. And with regards to young and upcoming officers, um, we all know it's a different day and age now. Uh, with social media, um, even, the, even the media in general, it's law enforcement is scrutinized now. And a lot of that is due to, you know, cell phone videos and social media. Oh, yeah. And, Absolutely. I will acknowledge there are bad apples in every profession. Mm -hmm. And a few police officers over the years have given us a bad name and have done the wrong thing. But 99.9% .9 of officers out here, we have families, we're human beings, we mm -hmm. have feelings. We have to go home to our families. And I believe, you know, with a 100% that we try to do our best on a daily basis. So to a young officer coming up, it's going to be a hard profession mm -hmm. to work in. You just have to accept that. Uh, you're going to have to be like a duck and let water lay off your back. Uh, but just treat people the way that you want to be treated and treat them as an equal because the gun and the bag mean nothing. You're still human. You're going to have feelings. And on the flip side, you know, what I wish the community would realize is, we, yes, I understand we do live in a glass house, but it's a Monday morning quarterback, a police officer, what you should or shouldn't have done, you know, we have milliseconds to make a life or death decision. That's right. And to scrutinize them on 
well, you know, he didn't have a, a weapon, or he didn't turn to you and point the gun at you. You know, we have a split second to make a decision, do we go home to our family or not tonight? Mm-hmm. And I think young officers, the problem now is they're so afraid of being sued, being fired, that they're second-guessing themselves. And this leads to officers getting killed, getting injured, not making it home to their families. So it's a catch-22. I mean, it's a, it's a hard profession, and we're human beings. That's what I want everybody to realize. We're human beings, and, you know, it takes – you're a person's action is quicker than my reaction. So if a guy has a gun on the inside and I have a gun, he can raise that gun, pull the trigger, and I can get shot. And the whole second hold for is a time. So it's, you know, we can't stand here and let somebody, you know, just take us to the brink of, we, we won't make it home to our family. So we're, you know, we're, we're making life and death situations in, in milliseconds, and it, it's tough. That's right. But it's what we, it's what we signed up for. I, I, I recognize the, the responsibility and, you know, Just one moment, please, you're next. House, I understand. I love the answer there, Sergeant Leverett, because I, I think it's the first time we've ever had someone on the show that actually was frank enough to say what you just said. And if you yeah, missed guess. part of that, I'd really like you to go on replay and hear that because, folks, it's so easy to judge somebody after the fact. It's so easy to judge you after the fact. But these guys have to get it right every time they're expected to. Excuse me. And they are human. And, and humans just don't do that, okay? So... It's sometimes people make mistakes. Sergeant Lever, we've got someone who's been waiting on hold a little while here. Sure. Let me just move her over to you. You're live on Leo's Coast to Coast with Sergeant Denver Leverett. Who's this and where are you calling from? Hello? Hello? Yep, you're live. Oh, hi. This is Stephanie. I'm from Louisville, Kentucky. There we go. Leather Louisville. <laughs> <laughs> How can we help you? What, what would you have for Sergeant Leverett today? I just wanted to let him know that we miss him on my CD. Oh, bless your heart. I, uh, yeah, I, uh, I definitely had a good time on the basket, and uh, they were here for quite a long time. The only, I will say that the only positive to not being on the show is that, you know, I get to spend more time with my family because I work all week, and then on Fridays, you know, we were putting in... Uh, 10, 12 hour days uh, for those. So, uh, there's a lot that goes on behind it. Thank you so cameras, much for your call, my you friend. Know, Thank you. I have to deal with. And it's, uh, yeah, so I do want to spend a little time with my family. But it was, uh, it was a very enjoyable experience. And, you know, I'll let him know. Thanks. thanks. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Bye bye. Oh, I'm sorry. She's talking in the background. She said she also wanted you to know that what you're doing is great. And uh, she really admires you and wants to thank you for your service. So that was it. My friend, I told you it'd be like this. This is, this is you right here, buddy. This is you. Welcome to Leo's Coast to Coast. You're live with Sergeant Denver Leverett. Who's this and where are you calling from? Hello? You'll need to turn down the volume of your electronic device, my friend. It'll give you a delay. Would you like to speak with Sergeant Leverett? Okay, why don't you go ahead and try and call back, okay? And we'll go ahead and handle your call then. Sergeant Leverett, uh, this is the love that people have. And, and, and it's interesting because you just have a following. You know, someone had mentioned about an accent. I want to explain something because it's been asked a bunch of times. Um, Southern Indiana, Kentucky, uh, Southern Ohio, okay? That's kind of, that's the way it is. I mean, that's just Louisville, okay? It does, so let's call it Louisville, all right? But you get close to where it is, and it's Louisville, because that's how it's pronounced. All right, let's try yeah, again, shall we? L-U-H. That's it, Louisville. All right. Hi, this is uh, Leo's Coast to Coast. You're live with Sergeant Denver Leverett. Who's this, and where are you calling from? Yeah, this is Diane. I'm from Florida. Hi, Diane. Thanks Hello. for calling. Um, I wanted to ask the sergeant if the strange intuition he seems to have is that Oh, my he was goodness. born with a little something extra, or is it a combination? Okay, so the question is, Sergeant Leverett, that extra bit of just that, that, that intuition you have, something you were born uh-huh. with or something that you developed over time? Both, maybe, I don't know. Um, the, I guess the, the intuition, I don't know if it's a combination of both, but I think 
guess we could maybe uh, classify it as the street smarts of the job. You know, growing up, I was a typical kid, and uh, my friends, we, we experienced a lot of things. Uh, I made mistakes growing up, and my father allowed me to learn by that, and I was really uh, given a lot of independence and responsibility, and allowed to kind of, you know, find my own path in life. And through these life experiences, you know, I gained a lot of intuition, a lot of street smarts, made a lot of mistakes and learned by them. So, you know, and I've had a lot of tragedy in my life, you know. Uh, my best friend was murdered in a drug deal. This is kind of what sparked my uh, passion for law enforcement, specifically narcotics. Um, so, you know, I've had, a, I've had numerous family members, overdose, a couple pass away. You know, uh, I've had a couple cousins that have went to prison for some, you know, various violent offenses. So, you know, this affects everyone. Drugs and crime affects everyone. And it has affected me personally. So growing up, I've had these life experiences. So maybe this prepared me a little for my career and then attending, like I said, the various trainings to where I try to perfect my craft and my passion of interdiction, narcotics, and just criminal activity in general. Uh, so it's kind of a combination. So I wasn't necessarily born with it, but my parents allowed me to, you know, learn life, you know, as it was. I mean, I wasn't sheltered. Uh, you, you have to live and you have to learn. And you make mistakes and you learn from them. That's it right there. But you know what? Thank you. Do you have anything else for Sergeant Thank you Leverett? So much. All right. Thank you for the call. We appreciate it. We really do. Thank you, dear. Um, Sergeant Leverett, that's, I love what you just said. And the reason why is because, you know, the thing that, and this is something for all the listeners to, to understand, you learn the most from your greatest mistakes. That's the honest truth. Mm -hmm. You always will grow the greatest from your biggest failures. Okay, as long as you acknowledge your failures and you realize that that's something I can build on. No failure is empty. There's always a gift in it. You learn the gift by growing from it. That's the whole point. I love what you just said because I, I think that it's, it's, I don't know if it's a generational thing or, or what, because you and I are about, we're close to the same age, not too far. But I think that I love what you said because it's so true. It really is to real life. So thank you very much. Hello and welcome to Leo's Coast to Coast. You're live with Sergeant Denver Leverett. Who's this and where are you calling from? Hi, this is Heather Benson from Maryland. Hi, Heather. Welcome. Hey, Sergeant Leverett, how are you? I'm good. You? Pretty good. The girls and I are the ones that have painted you and Flex a thank you rock back in February. And we just oh. wanted to take a chance to say hi and tell you, uh, thank you very much for all that you do. And um, the girls wanted to know if you still keep your rock in the car with you. Oh, yes, I do. It's in my glove box right now. <laughs> Isn't that yeah. cool? Isn't that yeah, cool? I, uh, I receive gifts on a daily basis and, and cards and uh, various things for flex. And, you know, I stay extremely busy through. If it's, uh, you know, a child or maybe a disabled vet or, you know, somebody with some struggle in life, I try to take the time to, to thank them and write them back or send them some photos or and write a, a note. Uh, just, you know, I stay so busy, I can't, I can't respond to everybody, but, you know, my appreciation, I want everybody to know it's, it's, it's sincere and I'm, I'm very thankful and I still have the rock in my glove box that stays with me and, uh, I have a couple of different things too that sent me that I, I hold on to because I know it, it has meaning and, um, you know, hopefully it protects me. Well, that's awesome. We're really glad you, you like it. And, um, yeah, we, uh, we miss seeing you in Flex, but um, we think about you all and we pray for you. And um, thank you. I mean, we can never say thank you enough for all that you do. Thank well, you so much. You know, my, not my goal, but what I want to happen through the show and you know, just the function of what I do. But, you know, that 99.9% of us out here are putting our life on the line for a stranger that we've never met. And we try to do our best. Like I said, we're not perfect, we're human beings, but we do have feelings. And uh, I just want 
people to know that not all police officers are bad. And, uh, we, you know, we come to work on a, a, a daily basis, and our main goal is to make it home at night to our apartment. Uh, and in the meantime, uh, you know, we'll take a bullet for somebody that we've never even met. So it's, it's tough. Some of the things that we deal with, when we have somebody, you know, video recording on, you know, Facebook Live right in your face, and you can't do anything because you got to be professional, but at the same time, you're, you're human. And you do have reactions to that, but you have to control them. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's tough at times, but thank you so much for your well, we call appreciate that. thank you very very much dear we appreciate it have a good day in maryland okay thank you you too thank you bye now bye sergeant lambert that's just the way it is here i mean uh, you you made such an impact on people within this show and, and you were there when the show hit one million viewers you were there when the show approached two million and you know, it was kind of a, a freight train moving forward. And, you know, one of the cool things about this, by the way, uh, Rebecca from Las Vegas just chimed in. All of you deserve way more respect than you get. And I, I think we all agree with that. Uh, but I would say that um, you were on the show during its infancy and all the way through its growth period to where just about it is right now. Um, what was it like to be on the show? It was... Uh... You know, it was a very good experience. Uh, like I said, I don't police any difference whether the cameras are there or not. Uh, but, you know, it was a blessing, and I hope that I cast uh, a good light uh, on our community uh, and our police department uh, because, you know, we, we love our community, and, and we wear this badge with, with honor, and, you know, we try to, uh, you know, display our respect and our professionalism. But at the same time, you know, we took an oath to protect this community, and part of that is, you know, we have to track down criminal activity, and we have to be proactive about it, and we try to prevent crime rather than react to it. Mm -hmm. So, with the community policing aspect, the proactive policing aspect, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I was put here to to lock up drug dealers. You know, amen, and, uh, amen, brother. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's and you know, if I could clarify something real quick. You know, some people have the belief that drugs are a victimless crime. And if I can somewhat see their viewpoint, I don't agree with it. Because if someone gets addicted to another heroin, okay, maybe you need a second chance, maybe even a third chance, but that getting help is going to be dependent upon you and your willingness to do so. But at the same time, these, uh, you know, these people that engage in drug usage, drug dealing, uh, you know, they have to supply that habit, and and a lot of them don't work. So then they go to your house at 10 in the morning, knock on your front door, you don't answer. They go into your back door and kick it in, and then your wife's in the shower, your infant son's in the, in the crib sleeping, and then they do a home invasion, tie them up, steal your stuff, maybe murder one of them. And so it's not a victimless crime. It, it is a very... Um, you know, it's, it's a very sad situation, so I try to do my best. And to uh, the people that need help, I try to give them help. And maybe even cut people breaks when a lot of officers wouldn't do it. Drug dealers, nah, you don't have a problem. You're just lazy. Um, you know, and I'll lock them up. So, uh, I, love you know, it. I understand some people's viewpoints on drugs, but I would say 90% of our crime is somehow directly or indirectly related to drugs. Well, if, if I could interject something here, and, and this isn't, I didn't expect to do this, and please bear with me, Sergeant Leverett. Um, I'm a person, many of you know I'm disabled, okay? Um, <clears throat> I went through seven knee surgeries, five back surgeries in the span of 11 years, okay? I was on narcotic painkillers that entire time. Now, I can tell you that as you take those things to be more effective, they up the dose, okay? And that's just the way it works because that's the way opioids work. I got to the point in 2015 where I simply made the choice myself. This wasn't this wasn't me. I don't do this. Yes, I hurt, but there has to be a different way here. And I made the choice to go off. And, you know, I felt so dirty going to a drug place. I did. I'll be honest with you. I really did because I felt I'm stronger than this. And I'll tell you what happened. What happened was I was actually told by the psychiatrist in the place, 
He said, you don't need drug counseling, sir. You, you need pain management, but there's a different way to do it. Folks, if, if there's anybody out there that is, has been on medication for a long time, narcotic, heavy medication, I want you to know that there is hope and there is a way to do it and it's not as bad as maybe you've heard it is. I'm a survivor of that. I've lived through it. I can tell you that you can make it yourself. You really can. There is a much better way. There really is. All right. All right. We have another call because you're the birthday boy today, my friend. Hello and welcome to Leo's Coast. It's not his birthday. Hello and welcome to Leo's Coast to Coast. You're live with Sergeant Denver Leverett. Who's this? Where are you calling from? I am calling from Florida. I'm a police officer's daughter and a sister of a cop. And I'll tell you what. That is the human interpreter. He is amazing. <laughs> is this is this Denver Officer Denver Levitt? Mm-hmm. Yes. Is it yeah, you, uh, Sergeant? Yeah, this is me. This is me. <laughs> well, I'll tell yeah, you what. Uh, I'll tell you what. They need to put your ass on the street more. Make you a <laughs> drill instructor or something. But you know how to, you are the interpreter. You are amazing. <clears throat> I'm a nurse. And I woke up wow. and I said, oh my God, I got to call Officer Denver. Well, you, 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 we, we love you on YPD. I loved when they had K9 Law on there. I thought that was awesome. I watched. Live PD every week. That's As great. As a police officer's daughter and a sister of a cop. Well, we appreciate your call and your love for him. My goodness, your energy, girl. You got you got extra Duracells on you today. All right. Take, take care, my dear. Have a good day now, okay? Thanks for your call. Well, there we go, my friend. You are truly a legend here in Live PD world and, and always will be. <laughs> I loved her enthusiasm. I'll tell you, it's it's the way it's been all week, my friend. All right. Uh -huh. Welcome to Leo's Coast to Coast. You're live with Sergeant Denver Leverett. Who's this and where are you calling from? My name is Lori. You guys didn't let me finish saying what I was saying to that sergeant. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Did you have more to say? Go ahead. Is Sergeant Leverett there? Yeah, he's still here. Yes. That's true. That's true. He, he is a well-built, awesome police officer. Wow. And he's got, he's, he's precisive. He's precisive. Yes, he is. There's no doubt about that. Was, was he, your, I, was he your favorite well, officer you know on the show? What? Well, maybe okay. someday he will be. That could happen, you know? I mean, was he your favorite on the show? I, I, listen, I love live PD. I watched cops for 30 years since I was a little girl. Okay. But now you got live PD on here, and these people are starting to realize what, like, you just had that roll call the other day on live PD on Saturday night, or that little baby had to have a tourniquet on her arm, and that cop saved that 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 kid, that baby.
baby's life. Mm -hmm. Have you ever, is it, do you have anything else to add to Sergeant Leverett, Major? Listen, you're in Indiana, I'm in Florida, but you know what? No matter where you are, you're always in my heart. Oh, that's sweet. Uh, thank, you. thank you very much for your call. Yeah. We appreciate it. And All right. I love canine flax. Okay. And, and I love you guys. And you All guys right. are always in my heart. And, Thank you. And that sergeant, you better watch out for him because he's going to tell you one, two, three. You you don't tell him the truth. He's he's going to he's going to bring the dog in. He's going to tell you. There you go. There you go. Right there. Well, we He's thank. Bring the dog in. Okay, we've got other people that want to call in. I appreciate your call back. Thank you we so much, dear. We love you. All right. Shana, we love you. Thank you, dear. We love you, Sergeant Leverett. Please be careful out there. As a police officer's daughter and a sister of a cop, please be careful out there. You're too good to let go. Okay, well, thank you for your call. We do really appreciate it. Thank you, dear. We love, we love. Okay. Sergeant Leverett, you are a rock star, sir. I mean, that is absolutely the truth here. Um, any, look, just a quick break in the action. Any special stories that come to mind from your career that you can share with us? about you know we're on the phone here with sergeant denver leverett from jeffersonville pd for just a few more minutes um i love your humility and i think that's the part that i, I told you this before our call before we went live i mean your humility has always been to me over the top and i i'm one of those people that intuition is a strong gift from the lord for me and 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 you can see that in the way you talk you can see it in the way you act it's one of those things i, I admire that in you because you don't come across as heavy handed. I do think you come across as trying to treat people as equals. And I think one of your greatest gifts is active communication. Okay, that is truly, truly a gift you have. Um, the question here, how many canines have you had in the past? And was Flex the ones that saved your life? Uh, he's my fourth. My first is Dutch. I had a guy try to take my gun. He saved my life. Uh, I had two guys get out of my car on me, and I got in a fight with one of them, and he tried to take my gun out of my holster. Hit the door pump, he came out, it was two on two, and one of the guys took off running, so we were, we were able to go home that night. So he was my first one, and, you know, no dog will be able to replace him. Mm -hmm. Then my second one was Oz, and I named him after my best friend, uh, who was murdered in 2001. Wow, and what a was, tribute. That was my, that was my best friend, uh, that was his nickname, was Oz. Remembrance of him. Uh, I had a guy pull a gun out on me when I was chasing him down an alley, and uh, he tackled him. He also I had a guy waiting on me in a, in a burglary in a pharmacy, waiting under a desk on me. He had a gun in his, you know, in between his knees, waiting to shoot me. He told me, and mm -hmm. uh, I ended up, you know, taking him into custody. And then my third one uh, was Buck, mm -hmm. and I, I named him after my. My veterinarian, uh, Dr. Golf, here in Clarksville, Indiana. Dr. Golf has uh, donated his services to any police canine anywhere in the area over the course of about 40 years, I think it is. And we've estimated he's donated personally probably over a million.
million dollars in money and never charges for any any type of service, any type of food, any type of surgeries. He's just a great man. So I named my third dog Buck, which is my veterinarian's nickname. And then my fourth one, uh, Flex. I really didn't have a, a way to name him, so I just put it out there on, I had Facebook at the time, but I don't do any social media anymore. And uh, kind of had a few options, and Flex is the one that got the most um, you know, votes. That's kind of the division I work in is the Flex division. We do narcotics. Mm-hmm. We've even done prostitution scenes. Uh, you know, we, we do a little bit of everything, uh, proactive, you know, law enforcement. So I'm naming Flex, and I guess he's been a, he's been a hit. But he'll be my last one. That's fantastic. We're on the phone for just about three or four more minutes now with Sergeant Denver Levitt of Jeff. Jeff yeah, start over again, shall we? Denver Leverett from the Jeffersonville PD Department. I'm so grateful to have you. You know that you're very, very humble, and um, you're the kind of guy that just seems like you could just go out and have pizza with, hang out, and have a good afternoon or a good evening with. You know, just a regular guy. Yeah, when I'm when I'm off duty. Um a lot of my best friends are not in law enforcement. Um, you know, kind of when I take the uniform off, I'm done. I don't really talk about it. I don't tell any stories. Uh, I'm not the type that when you see out, you know, I have my, my gun on and, you know, my, my life hanging out of my pocket. It's just, I, I like to just leave it, at, leave it at home, leave it at work. And then when I'm off, it's, it's my family, my son, my wife. Good for you. you. Know, uh, spending time with them and you. There is a, there is another side there. There's a backstory to everything, and I think that you um, juggle an awful lot of things in a very short amount of time when you're interacting with people. Um, I'm going to send you, just to so understand, Sergeant Lambert, a copy of this complete interview, and you know you're going to see just a bazillion hearts on the screen constantly, and and that's people that are just sharing their love with you. I mean, it's just it's an amazing thing to see. And I want to tell you of of the interviews, and we've we've been blessed. I'm not bragging; that's not who I am. I'm blessed by the Lord above to have Tom Morris Jr. on twice, Danny Brown, David Moreno, Sergeant, uh, I'm sorry, De- Deputy McElwain. Um, you know, big people from Live PD, and nobody has done what you've done. I mean, the amount Hello. of the amount of love that people have for you is so darn special, and. I truly just want you to know, you you know, one of the greatest things I think people can do with their lives is to know that they made a difference and that they're that they're being made a difference. You know, being around made a difference. So I want you to know that your being a part of Live PD, especially in its infancy, probably had a huge difference in making that show as big as it was, just by being who you are. That's the truth. Well, I appreciate that, and I. Uh... I want others to know that there's plenty of officers just like me that that don't get the recognition to do the same thing that I do every day, and uh, you know they they need to be commended too. And I mean, I commend those people, and uh, we we just we do our best. We're not we're not perfect, but uh, you know we do our best, and 
Amen. Amen. Any last words that you would like to leave with Live PD Nation? These people have been looking forward to this for a couple of weeks. Well, I sincerely appreciate all of the sincere compliments, and I'm very appreciative and very humbled by it. And, uh, you know, if, if you want to show your appreciation, you know, I get a lot of gifts in the mail from me and my dog. You know, take the time to, to recognize your local canine units. Uh, send them, you know, gifts, uh, such as tennis balls or big ears. I mean, canine flexi is very well taken care of, and, you know, I would like to see other officers around the country get their recognition. Maybe they're not on TV, but they're doing the same job that I do. Maybe even do it better. And, uh, you know, there's officers that don't go home every night. You know, we lose our life in a period. I want them to be remembered. So, you know, reach out to your local, your local agencies and show your appreciation and, and recognize those men and women. And, and just realize that uh, if somebody can put yourself in our shoes, during the scenario and realize that, you know, we have milliseconds to make a life or death decision. And if people just understand that, that we're, we're human, we have feelings, and, and we're not perfect, but we do do our best. Well, I'll tell you what, Sergeant Leverett, we appreciate your kindness while my doorbell rings and my dogs go berserk. Um, I will just say that uh, we want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts for being on the show today. Um, how about we redo this another time, maybe, because uh, one of the people has asked, how do we stay in touch with you? Because that's honestly how people feel. You know, they miss you. You know, you've been coming. You know, I don't know if you realize, but when you come into people's homes and, you know, you're a part of their family almost, they consider you as part of their family. I think what the hard part is, is that when you leave, it's like the loss of a loved one. Hey, guys, welcome to the interview. Can you guys be quiet now? Hey, 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 I'll get flex on you. So anyway, um, the, point, the point I'm trying to make is, you know, you become a part of people's lives and then all of a sudden you're gone and that's it. So I just want you to know we a lot of people care very much for you. We'd love to have you on again down the road. Folks, we better go before the doorbell keeps ringing off the hook. Sergeant Leverett, God bless you. Thank you for being a part of the show. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Sergeant Denver Leverett, Jeffersonville PD, has been joining us. Thank you to his assistant chief, McVoy, and his uh, police chief, and the entire Jeffersonville Police Department. We appreciate it. Thank you. We appreciate it. Take care, guys. Bye now.